Hi, I wanted to record this video because I had a question about how to work one of your Cengage homework problems. So I'm going to work this now. Let me know if you have any questions. So we have a company and we have two years worth of information and we're going to prepare an indirect cash flow statement. So we're going to start off with our operations. So we'll say cash flow from operating activities. And we always start off with net income. So we're going to look to see where we have net income. We can always compute it knowing the change in retained earnings and the dividends, but we always want to look and see what did they give us. And they told us that there was a $63 credit to retained earnings for net income. So that is our net income. Makes sense that it was a credit because net income makes retained earnings go up. So my net income is $62. When you see small numbers like this, you can assume they're probably in thousands or millions or something like that but it's nice and easy with these small, um, even numbers. All right, so after net income, then we're going to need to make our adjustments to reconcile net income to our cash flow from operations. So we have a heading that goes something like this. That's our heading. So the first thing we're going to do is look for depreciation to add it back. So we're going to add back depreciation. If they gave us an income statement, we could have found it, but they didn't. They just gave us accumulated depreciation. Um, so the difference in that might equal depreciation expense, depending on whether or not we had any sales of long-term equipment. So let's go up here and tell, see if they tell us specifically how much depreciation is. It says there was no disposals. So that's good news. That means that I can assume that this is my depreciation expense because I didn't have any disposals. So I'm going to assume that my depreciation can be the $26. All right, and then I need to look to see if I have any gains or losses. Since there was no disposal of equipment, I can assume that there was no gain or loss. So then I can move on to analyzing my current assets except cash and my current liabilities. So my first current asset, not including cash, is accounts receivable. And so it went from 49 up to 55. So I'll say increase in accounts receivable. And I will need to make that go down because opposite uh, assets work opposite. So I will say 49 minus 55, and that'll make it negative, which is the way I want it to be. Next, we have inventory, which is a current asset, and it went up, so we also want it to go down. So 99 minus 117. 99 minus 117. Oh, I did that in the wrong place, sorry. Um, all right, increase in inventory equals 99 minus 117. There we go. Okay, and then land is long term, so we'll wait and we'll take care of that if we need to under investing. So now I'll look for my current liabilities. The only one I see is accounts payable. It went from 37 up to 51, so I'll say increase in accounts payable. And if they go up, we go up because liabilities work the same. So I need this to be a positive, so 51 minus 37. And then I'll stop there because dividends are handled under financing. So now I need to net this together to find out what my increase is from operations. So I will do like this and I will tell it that these are the numbers that I'd like to sum and I get $78 and that is a net cash flows from operating activities. Next we'll work on our cash flow from investing activity. So we'll be looking for anything that happened to our long-term assets. So I'll just take a look here and see long-term assets. I had some land that went down. So the question is, did I sell any? And then I had some equipment that went up. So did I buy some? So here it says equipment was acquired for cash. So that tells me that the equipment that changed and that change was the difference of $30. I acquired that for cash. So I can say purchased equipment. And I would use cash when I buy something. So that would mean a minus $30. All right, let's see what else happened to our long-term assets. So land went down. 
So it says that land was sold for 120. Now I can see here that the land cost me, let's see, how much the land cost me? 580, but I sold it for 120. I think I didn't, I, don't, I think that's the numbers wrong, that's too high. 330 minus 250. All right, it cost me $80. So I sold land that originally cost me 80 and I got 120 for it. So that is telling me that I had a gain on some land. So I need to go back to the operating and I need to um, take care of that. So here I got rid of land for $80. I received cash of 120. So I must have had a gain for the difference. So I must have had a gain of $40. So I need to go back up here because I did not see earlier that I had a gain. And right underneath here, I'm going to add a line, insert, shift cells down to just give me that line. And I will call that gain on sale of land, gain on sale of land. And I need to remove the impact of that of net income. So that will be a minus $40. And I automatically updated that because my formula, double click and see, includes that line that I just did. So we're good. All right. And so I'm going to get rid of this because that was just showing you how I calculated my gain. So I removed my gain and I showed that I purchased equipment. Now I'm ready to show that I sold land, sold land. And I have to go by the amount of cash that I got. And it told me that I sold the land for $120. So I got $120 worth of that. So I don't have any other long-term assets. So that is all for my investing activity. So I'll net those two numbers together and I'll call that um, net cash from investing activities. Now I'm ready to go to financing activities. All right, and so for financing activities, I'll be looking for any long-term liabilities, including bonds and stockholders equity section. So I don't see any notes payable or bonds payable, but I do see some stock and it looks like my stock has gone up. So the par value of it increased by $45 and the paid in capital in excess of par increased by $15. So the issuance of stock must have given me a total of cash of $60. So I'll say issuance of common stock. So I got $60. Then I had some dividends payment of dividends. So it told me that there was a credit, no, a debit to retain earnings of $24 for dividends declared. But I need to see, did I pay that much, more or less? So let's look at dividends payable and see what happens. In 2022, I had zero dividends payable. In 2023, I had $5. So dividends payable went up. So I owe them some additional dividends because evidently I didn't pay them all of this 24. So I'll say 24 minus five equals 24 minus the five because it's still sitting in payable so I haven't paid it yet is for my payment of dividends. So my cash flow from financing activities is going to be the net of 60 and 19 which is 79. So my net change in cash is going to be what I got for operating, that's 38. What I got from investing, that's 90. What I got from financing, that's 79. So that's 207. So I'm going to go see whether or not I'm right. I was only looking for 169, so something's not right. So this is where we look back to see what did we do wrong. So I can see one error here is that 
uh, my payment of dividends is a minus, and when I put in the 24 minus 5, I should have put a little minus in here so I could get my sign right. There we go. And now I am in balance. So that is how, um, and I say in balance, now my net change in cash equals 169, which equals my net change in cash on the balance sheet of 169. We have to finish this though. The finishing of this is to add in beginning cash, which is right here, $14. And then the checkpoint that the cash flow is looking for is for us to do this. 169 plus 14. So we need to calculate that, 169 plus 14. And we need to look to see, does this ending cash that I calculated on the cash flow equal ending cash on the balance sheet? And it does, so that's my proof that my cash flows matches. So let me know if you have any questions on that. Thanks.